Right, in this video we're going to have a look at spawning in bots using Kismet, having them look for the player, fire at the player, and stop firing. In the next video we're going to have a look at getting the bots to move around the level, but for now it's just going to be spawn in, look for the player, etc. Right, to do this then we're going to need a spawn point for the actual bot itself, and for that we're going to use a path node. So I'm just going to right click where I want the path node to go, I'm going to find add actor, and add a path node. Now, the way that this path node is facing is going to depend, uh, is going to dictate the way that the bot is facing when it spawns in. And just like everything else, it's got a little arrow sticking out of it to indicate which way the bot's going to be facing. So I'm just going to leave it there. So my bot is going to be facing in this direction when it spawns in. Right, so we've got our um, path node in place. Now we need to go into Kismet to get this working. So we'll open up Kismet and uh, we're going to trigger this from a level loaded event which means as soon as the level's loaded in it's going to spawn in our um, our AI actor so I'm going to right click, I'm going to find new event and I'm going to look for level loaded which is right there um, we can leave the trigger count at 1 because we just want this to happen just the once and the next thing that we're going to look for is right click new action and we're looking for actor and the actor factory I'll move that into position. We're going to take the beginning of level output and plug that into spawn actor. We're going to click on the actor factory and come down and have a look at its properties. Now we need to say what kind of actor factory we're going to use, or what type of actor factory. To set this, at the minute it's set to none, we're going to hit the little blue drop down arrow here, and we're going to find a UT actor factory AI, which is that one right there. And uh, there's various options that you can set down here. Um, if we open up the factory, you can see you know what exactly we're going to spawn. Now, for the controller class, we're going to set that to a UT bot, and uh, for the pawn class, we're actually going to set that as a UT pawn, which I believe will be just fine. Down here, we can turn on give default inventory, so we'll turn that on and we can actually add items to the inventory list so we can press the plus button right there and then I can choose what kind of weapon or um, sort of pickup that this bot's going to have I'm just going to choose the link gun uh, for this particular bot but we can set it to the rocket launcher or the shock rifle as well alright so that'll do for our settings for the active factory now we need to plug our spawn point into the spawn point node right here so I'm going to make sure I've got my path node selected in the level which I do and then I'm going to right click on the spawn point node and we're going to go for the new object bar using path node 0. And that basically says alright this is where we're going to spawn the bot in. As for spawned we're going to right click and create a new object variable not using the path node just a new object variable and uh, we're going to give this variable a name and the name that we're going to give it is bot001 that says boat so I'll change that to bot. There we go. Bot 001. And we can refer to that a little bit later on down the line. Right, so the next thing that we want to do, I, I suppose we could play test this and you can see what, what actually happens, which is nothing because I haven't set it to a UT game. So I'm going to go view, world properties, and then we're going to set it to a UT game. And then we'll play from here. And you can see it's spawned our bot in, in the right location, but he doesn't do anything yet. He just sort of stands there looking all bot like. We can kill him, but there's a little bit more work to do to make him actually fire at the player. So we'll go back to Kismet and what we're going to look for here is we're going to need a condition which is based on is this player, uh, is this bot alive. If the bot is alive it's going to do certain things such as look for the player and fire at the player. If it's not alive it's not going to do anything. So we're going to go right click, new condition and we're looking for is alive and we're going to take the finished from our active factory and plug it into the in for is alive. We're going to connect the players node to the bot so it knows what this is actually referring to. It's referring to the bot 001 that we created. The next thing we need to do is uh, get a trace on the go. So it's going to look for the player. So we're going to go right click, new action, miscellaneous and trace. That's going to bring our trace out. We're going to take true from is alive and plug that into the trace. Now, the uh, the trace is going to start with our bot and it's going to end with the player. So we can we can just plug that into there, or we can right click, go new variable, and look for a named variable in the persistent level. And there's our bot zero zero one, right? Because we've made a named variable over here. So we'll bring that in, plug that into the start, 
And then at the end, we're going to need a player variable. So we'll hold P on the keyboard and left click. And we'll turn off all players. So it's just player zero. And plug that into end, which means that the trace starts with the bot, ends with the player. The next thing that we're going to need is uh, a couple of different behaviors. One for when the, pl it's the view of the, the player is not obstructed and the view of the player is obstructed. So if the view is not obstructed, we're going to fire at the player. And if it is obstructed, we're going to stop firing. So we're going to go right click, new action, uh, AI, and we'll get this start firing. And we'll take not obstructed and plug that into there. The target is going to be the bot, right? Because the target basically means who are we telling to start fire. And the fire at is going to be the player, because that's what the bot's going to fire at. And the next thing we're going to need is a stop firing for the obstructed. So we'll right click again, new action, AI, stop firing. We'll plug that in, and the target's going to be the bot, because we need to tell the bot to stop firing. And the next thing we want to do is sort of get a loop on the go so that it continuously uh, loops this entire sequence. So to do that we're going to get a delay. Hold D on the keyboard and left click. We're going to take the out of the start firing at <coughs> plug that into start and we're going to take the out of the stop firing and plug that into the start of the delay as well. You can set this delay to whatever you like really as long as it's above zero seconds. Um, we're going to take the finished output from the timer and we're going to plug that back into the condition to see whether or not the bot is alive and that'll do. So the sequence basically works like this. The level loads up, we spawn in bot 01 at this path node. It does a quick check to see if the bot is alive. If the bot is alive, it's going to do a trace. The bot will search for the player. If the player is not obstructed from the bot, it will start firing at it. If the player is obstructed, it'll stop firing and after one second, it'll start that sequence again. So let's see how this works. So we jump into the level, the bot can see me, so it starts firing. And then as soon as I hide behind here, it can't see me anymore, so it stops firing. And the trace continues. And when we kill the bot, the sequence can't do anything because false is empty. Alright, that's pretty much it for spawning the bots in and getting them to fire at the player. In the next video, we'll have a look at getting these bots to move around as well. Alright, hope it's been useful, and I'll see you next time.